Matt Step, Dave Campbell's Texas football back here at the Star in Frisco at the Frisco 7-on-7 seven seven qualifying tournament. Here with the head coach of the South Grand Prairie Warriors, Coach Brent Woodson. Coach, uh, thanks for taking a few minutes to uh, chat with us today. Ah, uh, you bet. Easy. All right. Yeah, uh, we, we we try to make these things uh, easy on you guys. You guys are working hard. You're you're a very busy guy. You got spring football going on, regional track, softball playoffs going on. I think your baseball team just made the playoffs yes, as well. Uh, but that, that's a good thing. It means the Warriors are w winning a lot of games, right? And success is contagious. You know, we want all of our people to have excellence. All right, coach. Now uh, seven on seven. Uh, you guys have been playing seven on seven for a while in a, in a local league. This is the first time you've ever done the uh, a state qualifier. Uh, talk about why that why the decision to play uh, in the state qualifier this year and what benefits. It's not real football. We know that, but there are some benefits to it. What are some of the benefits that you feel like you guys can take into real football in the fall? Well, first question: Why uh, kids wanted to? You know, at the end of the day, we want to try to do. Uh, what they want to do if it's, if it's good for them. Uh, and, and the benefits of it is they're competing. You know, like you said before, they're not sitting there with their thumbs on a, a game console. Uh, they're out and competing. Uh, the downside for us is we've got our best six football players uh, in, you know, in regional track or uh, at a combine or on an unofficial visit for the college. But that gives other kids opportunities. So, you know, really for us, we wanted to get out this spring. We had done it uh, a little bit at Richardson. Uh, we've always played. Uh, some of the college invitationals and we you know we've gone out of state a couple times this is our first state qualifier at south grand prairie uh, but we finally have a bunch and i've got a dad that i really really trust uh to run it for us that's the hard part because i mean you want to coach them and you, you know uil rules don't let you coach them so you gotta you're up here with me cheerleading and, and, and you're, you're just like oh oh it, it's pretty tough to, to to watch them compete but not be able to coach them i know because because you want you want them to have, to have success right well, I coach the college guys I watch on TV. So, you know, you, when you're watching, you're going to point out things or you should have done this, should have done that. Uh, but, again, it goes back to having people that you trust to handle your kids. And I've told the, the, the people at uh, the Coach Association, UIL forever, give us this. Uh, give us a six-week season that doesn't conflict with spring sports. Uh, now that doesn't conflict so much with spring recruiting because the NCAA has gone wacky and given the spring recruiting thing. Um, and I think that would be more productive. But that's not the rules right now, so we'll work with what we have. All right, now, let's talk about spring ball. You guys are, are involved in spring practice. Uh, that, I know that's going well. The biggest thing, obviously, is to come out of that thing injury-free. But uh, what, what are some of the, the position battles you're looking for young kids to step up in? And can you give Warrior fans a preview of what kind of team they're going to see when you guys take the field this fall? have a lot of core retaining, uh, returning in the skill side offensively. Defensively, that's what we lost. Uh, we're, we're, we return a bunch of kids up front defensively. Offensively, we don't return but one starter. So in, in short, we're real, rebuilding an offensive line that was very, very good last year. Uh, we're returning kids that played a lot of football. We have got four or five dynamite high school receivers. Uh, but defensively, you know, all our best football players are at Cal, at Ohio State, you know. They're on uh, TV playing on Saturdays, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And so so we're looking for that next crew. We're always going to have kids that can play defense because we always have kids that can run. Um, but like today, we're playing seven on seven. Our four best corners are in, at the regional track meet. So we get younger guys taking a shot at it and got some safeties playing corner. But the spring's been good. We are six workouts in, had our first scrimmage Thursday. You know, cross our fingers, knock on wood, whatever you want to say. We, we, we've been injury free. But, you know, I was talking to a college coach the other day. They said they went through their, their spring relatively injury-free. And I asked him the question, is that because we're smarter? You know, are we smarter about what we do? Are we taking less chances? I mean, I know we want toughness and we want to run into each other. But are we hitting the whistle a little quicker? Are we uh, having less days where we expose our kids to it? And, and then I think all of our strength and conditioning programs are better in the offseason. Because I mean, these kids come in and they're already in such good shape because of the strength. It's not like the, the old days in the 70s when kids they would go out and get jobs and work at, you know, McDonald's or whatever. And then... You have to come back and you have to get them into shape. When you guys get them in the spring and then when fall camp breaks, I mean, these kids are, are ready to go, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And, and you know, the other thing is is that we were all – and I, I don't really like this part of it, but we were so multiple sport oriented back in the past. And you come off the basketball floor or off the wrestling mat and you jump on the spring football – not a good deal, you know, not a good deal from a standpoint of, of expecting contact. I love the fact that the UIL gave us the two acclimation pr uh, practices now like we have in the fall. Mm -hmm. And now a kid goes out and he runs around and he gets taught in just a helmet and T-shirt. Uh, and then you go run at each other. It was kind of ludicrous in the past that the first day of spring football, you could get after it. Yeah. Uh, coaches loved it. Oh, yeah. But it probably wasn't very smart. Uh, how big was it this this year with the UIL where they were in the fall? You know, schools that don't have spring ball, you got to wait a week to start. But you can get your freshmen started uh, right away. That's got to be a nice thing to get your hands on the freshmen and get a week just to love on them and coach them up a little bit. Right? That's got to be a huge, big, big benefit, right? When Susan Elza presented that up in Carrollton last year and told us that was coming, it might have been the biggest duh moment of my coaching career uh, because I, I, it, it was so obvious that we were missing that. Uh, but I never thought of it. 
and uh, we really enjoyed it. I mean, I took, you know, we had 18 coaches on 85 freshmen. Uh, and you talk about being able to teach things down to the minute detail with those kids who I don't really care if they've been in your feet or not. They don't know anything. They need they need that minute detail, don't absolutely, they? Absolutely, absolutely. So we really enjoyed that week, um, and it was good for us because we combined that with our you know our regular coaches' work week. We worked a freshman, we went back to work and and got our stuff ready. So when our our, our varsity kids came through the next week, we were I think we were better prepared. All right, now final question for you. Now I'm not going to date you, but you've been around a little bit. You've been you've been with us for a while, coaching coaching them up. Uh, every coach always is is a mismatch of, of guys they've worked for and played for in the past, uh, and, and influenced them in their coaching style today. Who who are some of your uh, mentors in the coaching field, and who who's made you kind of the coach you are today? Well, my dad. You know, my dad was a was a great high school and college coach. Uh, worked all across Texas and Oklahoma. Um, I worked I, I worked and worked with for and played for the McBroom family out of eight Oklahoma and probably the core of what I do comes from them and then I learned about staffing dealing with staff and family from Bob Stoops my son played for Bob and I, I was an Oklahoma guy at the time and really got to spend a lot of time around those guys and you know Bob's Wednesday night family dinners and things were really legendary and then and it just showed me a little bit more about maybe what priorities ought to be um, so I, I probably that offensively Kevin Wilson Bottom line, Kevin Wilson, you can go fast. You can do traditional offensive things, but go fast. And Kevin's the one that introduced that to us. It's funny. Coaches are uh, – I don't want to call you guys thieves, but you guys definitely oh, will absolutely. take – You got. Uh, but, I mean, even look, coaches that are competitors, it's it's the, the coaching fraternity is interesting because I'll be at coaching clinics, and coaches in the same district will be sitting there on a napkin drawing up plays against each other and, and just talking football. It's, it's, a, it's a unique fraternity, and you don't see that in very many professions, do you? No, not at all. You know, what we I, I tell – uh, young coaches right now you need to be start making list of things that you will always do like that guy and things you will never do like that guy uh, and that's opponents that's people that you casually get to know or that you get to see and uh you know that's how we build our package coach appreciate your time i'll let you get back to watching your kids i appreciate what you do for student athletes hey, in the state of texas so excited. there you go well you we'll, we'll let you watch them and uh, good luck to the warriors uh, today and then uh, in the fall okay thank you very much matt